How you doing? It's Look at Cloud Consultant, and today we're going to be covering Windows versus Linux. As you can see here, this is Bill Gates hiding behind Vista. We're going to cover five points today, and then a couple of bonus points. Let's get straight into it. So, bloatware, point number one. This here is a thumbnail from Kent's Tech World YouTube video, which I thought was hilarious, so I had to include it in. But, what is bloatware? Essentially, unwanted software that just comes pre-installed in your computer. An example here from a commenter on that video is guys like me. Why does Windows have to come with all this Xbox and stuff, man? Which, as we can see here, I've got a couple of screenshots. When you get like Windows 11, you get Candy Crush and another version of Candy Crush and Cookie Fever and Skype and Office and OneNote and Solitaire and Friends and Xbox. It's like, mate, I just want the operating system. And so, like, here's an example of like a before and after of the bloatware that comes automatically installed with it. Additionally, it comes with like pop ups all the time, just here, there, and everywhere. I've been using Linux and Mac now for a couple of years, and I've just went back onto Windows for a, a client project because they're using Windows servers. And I forgot just how much these boxes pop up everywhere. The good thing with Linux no ads, no bloatware. Nice and slick. So, that leads us on to point number two. This little sad face. You'll be used to this tinge of blue if you've got a Windows machine or you've used one. You get these pop-ups all the time. We've got an update, we've got an update, 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 update. We'll get to in a minute why this happens, but it's a nightmare. And often it comes as well auto-doing these updates. So, like, it would just be like, you have to update, you have to update right now. I'm just going to kill the PC and update right now, which is a nightmare. I know you can switch off from settings or whatever, but why is it on by default? It's frustrating. Whereas for Linux, just from the CLI, or you can even get a desktop app to do it, but you just go and you're like, update this for me, please. Much better. Additionally, Windows, if you don't like the look of this, tough. The best you're going to get is this centered in the bottom instead of on the left which is what it is. I understand why they leverage boxes like this. It's a nice way to standardize the system, but it's just not very nice looking. Whereas for Linux, you can choose between different desktop environments, which is just like UIs. Here's a couple of examples, KDE and GNOME. And you can just be like, oh, I kind of like the look of Mac slash Windows, or that kind of Mac look, that Linux look. Whoops. Um, and so you can you can choose between those. Additionally, because of this kind of stuff, it's much more customizable to use Linux. So the third one may be a bit confusing, OpenAI. Why have uh, I used OpenAI? Well, it's in to do with it being closed and open sourced. OpenAI I thought was funny because it started as this open AI, open sourced AI, quickly turned closed source um, because you now don't get access to, to any of them, but they kept the name because it sounds nice. So here we have Linux. Because it's open sourced, you have all of the code out there to be looked at and leveraged to try and find security patches really quickly. Whereas for Microsoft, things like security are all in-house. So if there's a security bug, only they'll know about it because they only have access to the code. Hence why things like this can happen. Additionally, because it's open sourced, open sourced and closed source, the closed source code, you have to buy a license for it, which is a nuisance. Whereas Linux, you can just go and download it and then run it, and that's you, nice and easy. Number four, whoa, picture here, F1 for efficiency. Linux is lightweight and it's much more efficient. It can be run on old systems and new systems, whereas like Windows doesn't run really well on old systems. You really need to get the new one for it to work properly. Here's a wee picture of lightweight. And additionally, because it's lightweight and can be run on old machines, new machines, it's nice to leverage it for cloud. Because in the cloud, you leverage OPEX, operation expenditures. Whether it's CapEx, capital expenditures, CapEx would be you need to keep buying stuff. OPEX is you pay for what you use essentially. And so you can use worse machines and still get decent performance. Fifth and finally of the standard ones, we have here the Steam Deck, which I didn't even know about until I was researching this video, because I'm not a gamer, to be fair. But 
Steam Deck is like a handheld Linux console, so it's kind of like the Switch, but for Linux. Now, the reason this is so big is because it's so big. It sold, in 2022, 1.6 million units, 2023, more than 3 million units. So it's like 4.5 million, just 2022, 2023. It's one of the most popular purchases in the Steam storefront. So that's because it has this thing called Proton, or not because, but a big part of it is because of this software called Proton, which is a compatibility layer letting you run Windows games on Linux operating systems. So Linux can have their device and you can run your Windows games on it, such as Halo or Forza Horizon 4, for example, or Minecraft. And so what this allows you to do is expose Linux to a variety of people who would have otherwise not used it. So it increases the user base on Linux. So with all that said, you can, I mean, you can see here that at least the way this is portrayed is it's really skewing towards Linux. You can see why. But if we really look at like what's happening out there in the real world, for desktop computers, only like 3% of them use Linux. Like no one uses it. I mean, talk to anybody. They either have a Windows, which is like, this is 68%. It feels like higher than that, maybe changed recently, but growing up, 100%. OS X, which is, you know, your Mac OS, then Chrome OS for your Chromebook, 3% unknown. So there's more unknown <laughs> than Linux, according to these stats. But don't let that confuse you, because cloud engineer, you see Linux everywhere all the time. You're using Linux commands all the time to interact with Linux servers because it's open source, it's easy, it's flexible, it's lightweight. And so you can see here from a set of stats from another website, Linux runs 90% of the cloud. And honestly, from a cloud engineering perspective, it does seem like that. Unless you're migrating enterprise servers, which are Windows ones, if you're running any software, it's normally on Linux. Now, because of that, you need to know the Linux CLI. And that's why I made these free videos for you to go and follow along and learn how to use the command line to efficiently do things in Linux. So you don't have to click about, you know, your file explorer, blah, blah, blah. You can do it all from the command line, which is what you would do as a cloud engineer. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, questions, queries, do let me know in the comments below. And until next time, take care and I'll see you later.